Genesis. Show my hardcore is. What's up, freaks, beasts, and athletes? It's DC here with dclayborn.com, home of Genesis Strength and Conditioning. I am in our new gym, Superhuman CrossFit. It is our uh, our newest uh, gym to the uh, Genesis family. This is uh, not, uh, you know, a couple people ask the question. We still have our athlete gym. It is about a mile down the road. But we have been doing CrossFit for about a year in the morning, and uh, it became, you know, our version of CrossFit, and it's becoming such a, uh, you know, so many people were wanting to join and sign up that we pulled it out, put it into its other, uh, its own location to allow them to be able to run some afternoon programs and really get the best training that they need as well to progress uh, CrossFit-wise. Uh, today I had a, uh, going to answer an email, um, somebody had sum submitted, uh, Jimmy uh, submitted through uh, the DC Speaks button, which I'll drop a link below if you haven't checked that out. Um, basically asking about knee health and leg problems. He said he had suffered two knee injuries in the past. One was a torn ACL, and then the next one most recently was a torn meniscus. And he wanted to know kind of the best way to really build up strength in those legs to, uh, you know, and keep them healthy um, now that he's kind of, you know, what seems to be injury prone in that leg. And, you know, really... Um, <clears throat> Step one regarding that is to make sure you come back slow. Um, come back slow, do what you need to do to, to get that knee back to 100% before you worry about doing the things needed to keep it healthy. Uh, there's so many times that I've seen athletes kind of jump ahead of the game because some of the physical therapy stuff, some of the band work, uh, some of the mobility work, you know, it's just boring, it's tedious, and it's not fun and exciting, and so they skip that. Um, they go straight back into trying to lift heavy to rebuild the strength of the leg when really the joint um, isn't stable and isn't ready to support that load. And so it's just another injury uh, waiting to happen. So that is really step one is to make sure that you are, you know, uh, back to 100% in terms of mobility and function and, uh, you know, clearance from the doctor to really begin. Then from there... Um, you know, I wouldn't even jump back into to anything heavy using both legs, uh, nothing, really no deadlifts, really no, um, you know, squat variations, maybe some light kettlebell goblet squats would be fine, but I really would start hammering unilateral work, um, heavy sled drags from different positions. If it's an ACL injury that you're coming back from, you know, I would make sure, or a meniscus injury, the one sled drag variation I would not do is a backward sled drag just because the shearing force that can be applied to the knee, especially one that's weak and injured. Um, but really start hammering things like single leg squats, um, you know, static lunges, just reverse lunges, uh, step ups uh, from a lower box, working, you know, st uh, single leg uh, single leg box squats off a box to where you're standing on one side, uh, the other leg's hanging off to really get everything activated and firing again, and then slowly start adding weight in. And then once you're able to do that, where basically you have a good solid range of motion on that leg that's strong where you can go, you know, parallel roughly um, or even below uh, and do that with weight and use the same weight that's very close to your normal weight for the other leg because you're still working that leg out as well. Uh, once those get back to even, then you want to start adding in your bigger lifts, your deadlifts, your squats, uh, that type of stuff, your jumps. Um, but starting off, you really want to make sure that that leg is brought back up 100% through therapy, through mobility work, through stretching, through joint preparation. Then move on to strengthening it unilaterally so it's able to start getting balanced with the other leg. And then once that is established, then you start hammering the bilateral leg movements uh, and jumps. What's going to happen if you skip those is if you, a lot of people will go straight into the bilateral stuff and because they feel the weakness in that leg and the, they don't feel it so much with bilaterally, but when they're squatting, when they're doing stuff like that, one of the things that, that's going to happen is that dominant leg is going to take over um, just because it can since it's moving at the same time, which is not going to allow the, the, the weak leg to get stronger or, uh, you know, take the force that's needed to, to rebuild it and get it functioning back 100%. So make sure you don't skip out those therapy, you know, mobility, flexibility, and joint prep stage, and especially spend a lot of time working unilaterally to rebuild that strength and that range of motion while, uh, while under a load before you jump back into the bigger lifts. 
Uh, there's some smaller things you could do as well just to get the knees kind of warmed up. Maybe some light neoprene sleeves, some blue heat, uh, performing some TKEs, some just basic joint prep every time you work out or before you, you know, perform a sport, if that's what you're doing. But really, you know, taking those three stages kind of in that process, that's going to be the best way to ensure that that knee is healthy, ready to go, and they're balanced and even to minimize the chance of uh, the risk of injury, you know, later on, no matter what you're doing. So check out the links below. I got two, uh, some, some free gifts for you guys, and then I also put the, the Ask D, uh, the DC Speaks link below if you have a, a question you need answered. Now you guys know, make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date. I got a bunch more videos coming you guys' way. Knowing's half the battle. Genesis. Show my hardcore is, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yo.